Let's take a look at uh, the ps command in more detail. We looked at it uh, briefly in the previous video, but uh, let's take a second look. So the ps command, all it does is wor work sort of like the ls command, but for processes. The, what, are, what is a process? A process is a running program. So this is an external command. It's in slash bin, and you can run it as ps or slash bin slash ps. The standard output that you will see is a bunch of columns, usually four or five columns. Typically you will see a process ID, the terminal that the command is connected to, or the terminal that the command is running in, and how long it's been executing, and then the command itself. There are a number of options. Uh, A and F are the most commonly used when there are others. A displays the status or lists the processes that actually only the ones that belong to your current terminal. If you want to display all the active processes, I believe you have to use the minus X option. F displays a full list plus it uh, displays relationships between commands. So let's just take a quick look at this. Normally you just say PS and you get in this case one, two, three, four lines. I mean sorry, two lines as two processes. There's a lot more things running in the background. I mean sorry, running um beyond this terminal. So okay, so let's take a look at the columns. There's four of them. There's the process ID, there's the terminal that the process belongs to. So this is bash running in this terminal and you see that uh, PS, whenever you run PS, you will see one line which will always be PS because of course PS is one of the processes that are running. So if you were to say minus F, you'll see a fuller description. That is, you will see user ID in addition to process ID. And this is the process ID of the parent. So for one thing, take a look at this. The process ID of PS is 4262. The process ID of the parent is 4132, which is the process ID of bash. So that makes sense because we are running this PS as a, as a child process of bash. That's why the parent of PS is the bash shell. The parent of this bash shell was some other process, and this looks like it was another bash shell that I started a while ago. So it's not obvious, but that's what that's what it most likely is. So you can combine options and say PS minus AF. These are say PS A or PS minus A. These are all of the um processes that are running that are owned by me. If you want to see the processes that are all of the processes that is not just mine, um, you have to use the, the X option. And in this case you, sh you see relationships between processes. For example, let's take this one, PSAXF, which I just ran, is a child of bash, that's what this means. This means that this comes, this PS is running under bash and bash itself is running under terminal. And there's some other process that's running inside this terminal as part of the a child of this terminal program. Okay. So we saw how things run in the background and let's take a quick example of that. So one way to do this is to say Sleep 10, remember, sleep by itself, just wait for 10 seconds. But, um, and it, it's one of those commands that you, know, you think, well, this doesn't really do anything. All it does is pause for a certain amount of time. Well, it's tremendously useful to simulate processes that take a long time. So if you had a program, let's say a program that was crunching movies and takes a long time, and they typically do, um, you can we can simulate a long program by using the sleep command. That's what we're that's all we're really using it for. There are other uses for it too. Okay, so let's say we say sleep ten, and this time we run it in the background. 
10 is probably not long enough. What I want to do is have it running in the background and then look using PS to see if I can detect that sleeping process. So it's running for 20 seconds. There it goes running in the background. I say PS and there it is. There's my sleep program and I can check out the process ID. Um, it was bill for the PS commands. This was 4269. 4270 was the PS. Should be done now. There it is. It's done. And now if I do PS, there's no sleep. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Try this out. Various combinations. One thing that I'd like to try again is that no hop command. Let's try that. What I'll do first is I will start up another terminal. That usually works out better. And I will make this bigger so that you can see it and I'll run it right next to each other hope this works okay so if you did something like this no up there's no hang up and what I've found I just tried this and it seems to work better if you say something like this starting something like this run the echo command and no hop goes with that and then if it turns out it, you can run things together just have, it's a little picky about where you do this so let's say date sleep and then just to try it out we'll try sleep of two oops and date again And let's see if this works. I have a feeling this will not work, but we can fix this. Oh wait, it does work. All right, let's try a longer time period. Uh, note that this text does not appear because it's no hop is appending output to this file so you can cat that and you will see those starting messages there it is there they are and now what I'll do is I will try to take the output and put it into a file Just call it output Alright, so I think that is working perfect. So now what I'll do what I really want to do, which is to run this in the background. And I'll have it sleep for longer. Let's, try, let's say 60 seconds. That should give us enough time. Okay, so let's see what we're doing here. We're saying run this, run all of this, but don't let it hang up. So it should say echo starting. That might go into nohop.out. Then it will run date, sleep 60, and then date again. And the output of all of that will go into a file. And we have that running in the background. And we run it with nohop so that even if we exit the shell, we should still see it running. So let's try that and see if all of this will work. Start it off. Look in this shell. In the second shell, I mean, say PSAF. And one of the things that we can see here is the sleep 60. So there is our sleep running. So now the question is if we do a control D or exit and then check. The same thing, is it still running? I'm not, looks like it got killed. All right, so it's not working exactly as I hoped it would. Let's take a look at the output. Let's, oh wait, I think it actually, you know, I think it is running. Let's just try it. We'll use grep sleep. Well, all right, so another thing we can do is it might just be that we waited too long. Let's try looking at 
output and sure enough it did run and it did run for this so it looks like we just missed the output so let's try all of that again we'll have to start another shell and crank up the size there it goes we're gonna have to run all of this no hop and it works best to say something like this starting now date sleep 60 oops. we're doing all this just to see if no hop really does allow you to log out while a background process is running and we'll clobber that output file that we had before that's okay and run this in the background Let's check here PSA X and we'll grab sleep there is our sleep 60 we'll exit from here okay yeah it did work so now we can see that although we killed that or terminated ex or exited that shell it still ran notice that once we exited there is no terminal connected to that sleep command there was one before when we issued the no hub command with the sleep and all of that and yeah so it did work it's just that sometimes we don't really see it we might miss it because we might have checked after the 60 seconds or it might have just been that uh, PS didn't show any process that was not connected to a terminal so I think that might have been why we hadn't seen it before okay so those are nice ways to look at the usefulness of PS you can look at uh, all the running processes you can pipe the output through grep and search for just those processes that we are interested in now what exactly is this other grep that's actually the same thing it just so it turns out that by default when you say grep these options are automatically inserted in there even though we didn't type it in so when we say grep sleep this is actually goes in it goes in by default and some of these things you can check using the alias command you might see it so here it is when you say grep it's actually aliased to grep with this default options so another thing to note is that when you say ls you're actually running ls with this color auto option too just like grep so these are things these aliases are set up so that things look nice so for example these colors show you what you're searching for so if you had massive amounts of output you would see exactly what you are searching for next thing that I'd like to show you is that you can kill a running process so let's say you run this for 60 seconds one way to do that is if it's running right here you can hit control C that actually what that really does is it looks like it kills sleep but what it really does is send a signal to sleep and the default response to any signal is to die so sleep just dies so what happens if we say sleep 60 ampersand now we can't send a control C to it because if you see control if you try control C just it you're sending control C to the bash so to see to, to if you want to try to stop sleep here's what you can do you have to do PS you have to get the process ID and you have to say kill 4438 and if you hit return you will see that you'll get this error mess uh, I mean you get this message saying the sleep was terminated so what kill does is it stops a running process 